Hey, Mr. Alvin, checking in. Hey, yeah, it's great to be here, but it's a little loud, don't you think? Yeah, we uh, we like to set the mood right when you get into the lobby. Oh, that's good. Then you won't mind I invited 300 people to party in my room tonight. Do you live, eat, and sleep in the hotel industry? Looking to brush up on your game? You've come to the right place. Welcome to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. Hey, everybody, and welcome to a live No Vacancy uh, broadcast for those of you listening to the podcast version. This is over, but at one point, it was live. We're coming at you from AHOA's annual convention this year in San Diego, California, where we've got the official podcast sponsors, and we are excited to be here broadcasting for all the rest of this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of great content coming out, both live and uh, being recorded. But today, we're in the studio celebrating AHOA, and I have with me Mr. Bruce Ford of Lodging Econometrics and Craig Sullivan of the Click Conference. How are you guys? Great. Thank you for having me. So, See, Glenn, I yeah. appreciate you extending me another invitation to join your podcast. Uh, I, it's always exciting to have you here, <laughs> and I want to uh, I want to thank the good folks at uh, Almo Hospitality for making a great commitment to the No Vacancy Podcast. They're sponsoring us now, so I want you guys to reshape your expectations of what an FF and E distribution partner for hospitality should be. Make Almo Hospitality your go to partner to simplify FF and E deployments for guest room and beyond with industry leading brands, the latest hospitality trends, and distinctive new to market brands. Coupled with their specialized business development and hospitality dedicated sales teams. Almo Hospitality is the division of Almo Corporation, the nation's largest independent distributor of professional audiovisual, consumer electronics, major appliances, outdoor f- uh, furniture, and housewares, and a lot more. And that's why you guys are starting to see that great Samsung ad that's appearing every single week in the No Vacancy newsletter. But now, back to us being here at AHOA. This great booth is sponsored by Redwood for another great uh, sponsor of the No Vacancy podcast. Wow, this is, a, this is an exciting day for us here. It is. Yeah, and congratulations on the booth again and being back at AHOA for, you know, your broadcast. This is great. Yeah, it's you, our man. third time being the official uh, podcast partner for the AHOA conference, and it is so much fun. 30th anniversary here for AHOA. Uh, you know, Bruce Ford, we've been coming to these events now for, gosh darn, 20 years or so. I think I was recalling that the first one I went to yeah. was at the MGM Garden Arena in Las Vegas, and it was a different time <laughs> uh, Yeah, many, many years ago, probably 99 or 2000, I think. That was the last one. Uh, I think I remember, uh, yeah, I definitely was at ones before that. But the first one that I really have a strong, distinct memory of was in March-ish of 2001 after Bill Clinton left the White House. He was the uh, the keynote speaker at the event. It was at the Atlantic City Convention Center. Boy, could you feel the energy of that dude. And uh, ever since then, we've seen like uh, George Bush was here. I think Bush and Clinton were here. Here. They get so many amazing folks that attend these events. Yep. They do. They've always, you know, got a, a great keynote, and it's always exciting to find out what's on the horizon with oh, oh year year to year. Yeah. I think it, the first one I went to was in Long Beach, and it must have been close to twenty seven years ago at this point. Whew. And you know, it was it. I'd never seen anything in the world like an AHOA conference. You know, and I've seen I've seen some outstanding conferences, some great concerts, but there is nothing in the world like this conference. It is just a great celebration of an industry that we all love and participate in. So I guess you haven't been to a high tech conference then, because those people know how to party too. No, I haven't <laughs> as a matter of fact. Yeah. I have not. So Dallas yeah. Cowboy cheerleaders. That's all I have to say. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that sums it up. (laughs) Uh, But the other thing that's unique about AHOA is that you get really a spread of all different types of job descriptions in the hotel business. You have housekeepers here. You have front desk people here. You have people who own hotels. You have people who run hotels. You have really quite a collection of different jobs. And the education portion, of course, is a big part of the AHOA package that they have here, and I think they've already been running classes for two and a half days for many of the attendees. So the conference that begins tomorrow morning with a general session and then uh, the exhibit hall is is nearly just, you know, three days in, if you will. (laughs) Right. Right now, yeah. yeah what, what did? How many uh, vendors they have this year? Was it four hundred seventy-five thousand? I think <laughs> the latest count. I've heard a number near eight hundred. The last list I had had about six hundred booths on it, but certainly bigger than last year when we were in the D.C. area. And well, they have all the space that they need here at the San Diego Convention Center, so they're going to fill it up. 
Uh, yeah, yeah and they, and they are, and everybody knows this is the where uh, Comic Con is, and it's funny. I saw some people online already for a Star Wars panel that's happening in August, so they're they're just sitting there they're waiting getting for that ready session. for it. I that's, hope they. I hope that's they make the way it in. Disney perceives it, Glenn. You're just <laughs> online for as long as they can possibly <laughs> put you online today. You want to talk about online? That's, Sting announced today that yeah. he's going to be in residence at the Coliseum uh, at uh, Caesars in Las Vegas, putting tickets on sale 13 months ahead of a show. Oh my goodness! Wow. So what are you going to do with my money for 13 months? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's something else. That's a new phenomenon. But, hey, Glenn, I wanted to talk yeah. about your sponsor for a second here, yeah. Red Roof. I'd mm-hmm. like to congratulate them on their impressive pipeline uh, with the new Hometown Suites brand, uh, Hometown Studios brand that they have, and, and the Red Roof and Red Roof Plus. They really have quite an impressive pipeline out there. And congrats to Matt Hostetler and Phil Hugh and – and Joe Luck and the team and uh, Andy Alexander for doing just uh, yeoman's work out there. And I know the AHOA membership is a big part of their franchisee community. So good on them. Uh, yeah, good on them. And for those of you listening to the podcast version, I think the second half of the show is going to be an interview that I'm doing while we're here at the uh, the No Vacancy Studio, sponsored by Red Roof at AHOA, uh, with Phil, you, and uh, Andy Alexander. I'll be speaking with them, I think, on tomorrow afternoon, which is uh, Thursday, and we'll be broadcasting that live um, as well, if you guys want to check that out on the AHOA uh, channel. So... Um, I'm excited to be here for HOA, but I want to know what you're seeing as the observations out there for the year so far, Bruce. I'm sure you've got some numbers because you always come with lots of numbers. <laughs> always prepared. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the observation is the pipeline's still going to be up in 1Q. Uh, we're still going to see more openings this year than last year. There really is no uh, operational uh, negativity out there, save for a few markets that are seeing quite a bit of supply. But for the right. most part, we're still seeing unprecedented demand growth, long-term trend at 3.4 per month for the past 10 years. Uh, that is uh, a point and a half al- above the long-term average. Rich, yeah. And if you think about 10 years ago, the iPhone's about to be 11 years old, and the mobile device clearly has changed the way people integrate into their jobs. It's changed the way travel has been affected and continues to have a positive influence on the hotel business in the United States. That's a really great point that you're, you're positing, that um, the mobile culture has really started to become a real thing. We're no longer talking about it as, uh, you know, I remember saying, oh, one day, one day, one day. Okay, it seems here. to have snuck up on us, and now all of a sudden it's here, and you're right. More people than are traveling than ever for so many different reasons. You know, you're right. It's it's not just the recreational traveler. It's not just the pure business travel. And you've got a lot of, you know, the millennials now with their, you know, experience-minded travel. And you look at, you know, you and I were up at the, the new Moxie Hotel in the Gas Lamp last right. night, okay? And if you look around, it, it was full of tech everywhere you went. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you've still got everybody, you know, texting one another, even though they're maybe sitting across from one another. Yep. But you know, yeah, you're right. Well, you know, looking people directly in the eye and talking to them is a very difficult skill for a lot of people these days. I think it is. I, you know, I have to agree with that. I, you know, all of us come from a generation where we like to talk, and you know, we're, we're usually pretty good at it too. Yeah. So. <laughs> but the fact that you can just take your phone, you really don't even need a laptop. Most people don't Correct. to do their job today, and they're traveling. Uh, that's a that's a huge burden lifted. Yeah. Whether you don't need. You know, big briefcase. You don't need a lot of extra materials to do it. I mean, the days of, of having to deal with that stuff are largely over. And so that's made the culture more mobile. But I think companies uh, accepting the fact that it really does improve the pool of potential employees by being able to not force them to live where the headquarters is and allow them to telecommute, where just a telecommuting employee that isn't a traveling employee um, goes on the road for almost a month a year just to do their job inside the company. Company, yeah. And it's cheaper for the companies to do that than it is to save a cubicle and force them to live in the town where the company is. So that's had a big impact, too. Right. And it's uh, it's also, I would say, I'd argue really good for the environment. You have a lot less people going back. It's a better quality of life. And that's one of the things that now in a world of full employment – people are craving is a better quality of life. Life. I think most Americans feel like we work too darn much and any minutes you can get back every day, I think is so essential. And it's starting to leak into the hotel business too because front desk management, revenue management, uh, even even some 
uh, engineering jobs can almost be done remotely where you can receive a notification, hey, now there's five lights out at the hotel. Right. You got to go there next right. week. Yeah, for, like, for example, my, um, uh, my, uh, my sponsor, uh, SkyTouch, who sponsors the video series here on the No Vacancy Network, um, their PMS, for example, is completely mobile. So uh, the general manager could leave, go to the kids' soccer game, and be on the phone and check out any issues in the hotel, look at all the reports in the hotel, and really get a good idea of what's happening in that business while being away from that business. Yeah. Well, it's true. I mean... Do you guys travel with a notebook anymore? No, but still funny, needed for some things. Funny yeah. enough, I Read still get documents yeah. and create spreadsheets. I'll give you that and do powerpoints. Yeah, so I still I still don't do that from my iPad. But many of my demonstrations I'll do on the show floor here today. My laptop will still be in my room. But when yeah. I go to somebody's headquarters, I still have to be able to plug into the projector, right. if you will. Yeah, but so I, that's the main reason. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, you know, I mean, between my phone and between my my tablet. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm good. Yeah, you know, I've, I've lost covered. 10 pounds. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it wasn't a diet. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good. But, you know, also you come in and I was part of opening up a, a boutique hotel in Northern California. We've been open for almost a year now. And it is in the middle of Silicon Valley. And the question we kept asking ourselves was how much is too much tech? Okay. We don't have the traditional front desk or pod. We've got an associate that, or team member, let me get that correct, it's not an associate, a team member, that will come up to you with, with an iPad, right. and they will check you in on that, and then as they're escorting you from the, the, the threshold of the front door, they will pick up your room keys and hand them to you along with you know, the, the information envelope right. with the Wi-Fi code mm -hmm. and everything else, or we could set up your phone and go, go from there. So, you know, it's, you know, if, if you look at what we're carrying around on our phones, it's more technology than what they had in the Apollo spacecraft. Right. I mean, that's phenomenal. You know, and, and it's just going to keep getting better. And better and better. Yeah. I, it's, uh, it's really unbelievable all the changes that we're seeing in society. Bruce, how do you see it? Well, that tech change is, is, is real, and, and, and I still don't do the mobile key. Um, I've just begun... I will admit to do <laughs> mobile boarding passes for airline flights. Oh man! Which I, for I, me, I still, I still ask for the paper ticket. Which, which for me is a big yeah. step. Okay, but I'll only do it if my phone's over sixty percent. All right, so see, it's kind of. My I, deal. I, I still am afraid to, but even though I have clear and pre-check, I just yeah. don't want to get the stink eye from the TSA guy. You know, they seem to be used to it. Now. They are now, but at first they weren't, and it's it scared me. And quite frankly, I don't even need to. to I don't even need anything anymore because you just you know you do your little fingerprints and they just uh, they wave you through. It's through. pretty. Uh, it's pretty yeah. amazing with clear yeah so how many letters did you have after your first name and last name now is it your clear your pre-check your no neutered, i think, that's, your I think spade, that's, all that kind of stuff okay <laughs> md phd so uh, <laughs> you were talking about technology and we were having a couple of uh, drinks uh last night at a, a hotel in town that has gotten rid of the front desk and they encourage yeah. you to check in at the bar correct which to be fair is right there at the entrance yeah and they've got a sign that says check in at the bar yeah but the entire time we were there, and I hate to say just how long we were there, <laughs> but not one person that came through the door seemed to have a strong sense of where to go. Everybody got confused. They were all lost. I agree. And they, you know, you put a sign out there and you could have it lit up. Yeah. You could have it flashing. It you could send four me emails in advance of arrival. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't right? matter. Yeah. Yeah. It, for some reason, you know, we're, you know, it, it's. It's almost like the iron in the ironing board. You expect that in the room. Right. Okay. There was a time where you had to call the front desk and they had to send it. Okay. And now everybody's expecting a front desk or a pod. They're not expecting to go check in at the, the bar in the, in the front of the hotel. Right. And are they going to get used to the term living room or living space instead of lobby? So right. it's all changing again. And... We'll see, you know, the next generation coming up. We'll see how they are. Yeah. What's the impact of location services? So if you have your right. cell, if you've given your mobile number to that hotel, they can now sense when you're in the area. Mm -hmm. There's tech to do that. Right. 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 So 
is that the next step, the location services, so that your phone starts lighting up because the hotel's sending you text messages because it knows you're there? We know you're five blocks yeah. away. Your right. room's ready. Yeah. You know, go to twenty seven thirty four. Right. I think go that, to the bar. That would yeah. be. We're right yeah. on the cusp of that. Yeah. We we are, but people still need to uh, adapt. And I think people are missing the whole notion of those signs and the front desk vanishing because. You need that transition zone from the outside to the inside because, yeah. you know, you, you're coming, you're walking through the door and you're not really thinking about it. And it takes a few moments for you to just kind of calm down and get resituated right. and absorb the atmosphere that you're in. So right. I think that if you have signs that are too close to the front door, you're just naturally not even going to uh, recognize you don't even see them. them. Yeah. 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 But the problem is after that, then you get so deep in that there's no way to do it. Now, in uh, retail, they say um, you instead of putting the, the shopping carts, the little ones that you hold, like right. the CVS or something yeah. like that, don't put them right at the front door. Put them in, in the yeah. store somewhere because after someone gets in there, even if you put them in the back, then they'll go, oh, this is helpful. And yeah. they'll grab it and they'll actually buy more. So a little... They've seen something as they're going to get yeah. that cart. Yeah, a little well, uh, customer behavior tip for you. Well, it was also funny at that that particular hotel we were at last night. Right. Okay. Once you checked in, you found your way to the bar. They they pointed to the other side of the bar to where mm -hmm. the computer was, and they would check you in and print your key. They offered you a cocktail or an alcohol-free yep. cocktail. Mm -hmm. So, and it's like. Huh, let's see how many of these people hang here for a little bit, you know, start, start right. ordering drinks. So. Well, that's the point of the hotel giving you one free drink because right. you're likely to take three. Yeah. So you're good, they're going to get you for more. Exactly. Um, and with the, the, the changing in the bar mentality in terms of how much they're charging beers for $10, uh, you know, I mean, what's a, a draft beer is not $10, okay? <laughs> no, but I'm just thinking, you know, that's kind of a deal where I go. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But, you know? I mean, it's uh, the hotel, obviously, the bar is the most profitable thing in the hotel if it's done correctly, okay? And it is part of the new lifestyle and living room True. format that people are looking for. Yeah. And it is part of that next culture where, I mean, how many people do you know that are under 25 that don't even mix alcohol? They just shots. All the time. I, see I think it's the vast that. majority of it. In the next generation, because yeah. they don't want to sit down and actually talk to anybody and have right. a experience a cocktail. Just give me a shot of tequila, okay? Right. Uh, it, that, I see that more and more often. I have not experienced that. not at that. my house, okay? <laughs> <laughs> not at my house. <laughs> I'd like to know who you're hanging out with that's under 25. I see it all the time <laughs> in the bar at the hotels, particularly at the hotels. Um, not necessarily out at night, per se, if you will, but yeah. the hotels is definitely part of the it's, – it's an increasing part of the culture that's traveling. So how are you seeing uh, the world of California there, Craig, Mr. California you know, guy? We're here in San Diego. What's going on? You know, it's, it's, it's good. You know, I'm, uh, I've taken on a couple of projects. I'm uh, going to be repositioning a hotel, so I'm meeting with their entire oh, team. Fun. Uh, yeah, it's, it should be. Um, it's a hotel that doesn't have the best reputation right now, um, and the ownership realizes that, and they want to change things and correct the courts. Now, we'll see how serious they are about it. I've got a meeting with them, and I'm also bringing in an advertising person so we can have a little bit of a miniature think tank right. with new names mm -hmm. and a few other things with that. But labor's still a big issue out here. Finding a qualified general contractor for whether it's a PIP or a ground up uh, construction project is also getting very, very tough. Right. Um, you know, it's uh, Anaheim still setting all kinds of records. The new JW topped off uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's going to be well over 400 keys. Galaxy's Edge reservations are going out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that opens up next month. Yeah. So for the most part. Yeah. Uh, so I'm figuring it's kind of probably going to be about two years before I get into Galaxy's Park, right? Uh, uh, or Galaxy's Edge at the park, rather. Um, you know, but it's it's still good. I mean, we're you know we're 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 coming into what I refer to as our silly season. Okay, everybody's out of school. You know, pretty soon summer vacations. Everybody's heading to the beach. So it, the coastal communities will definitely be invaded. Room rates are going to jump. Everybody's already at 75 to 85% occupancy Ooh. as it is. So, you know, it's, I, I, I think it's still good. Now, you know, I'm, I don't want to be in Palm Springs. It's getting to be, you know, 100 degrees plus. Right. 
No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> You'll stay. Uh, I'll stay at the beach. I'm yeah. good. I'm that's really why, that's good. That's why he's the Baron of Pebble yeah. Island. <laughs> what Craig says about California and the labor problem, I think if you ask any industry executive, you even ask people attending AHOA here, they would tell you labor is the number one problem in the industry, yeah. up, down, left, right. Yeah. Whether you're looking for a contractor or you're looking for people to clean the rooms in your hotel, any which way, it's a big problem. And there's just not enough of it. On, on As, any front, you're absolutely correct about that When I, you know, okay, you know, I was with a GC for a number of years, um, and it's tough. You know, they, they're not finding qualified people right now. You know, nobody is. Right. And Even Disney has slowed down because they don't, they can't get enough construction labor. Well, as a, yeah, I, I mean, um, they have this uh, Mickey's Mouse Runaway Railway ride that's yep. supposed to have opened early fall, but it looks like they need those people that are working on that ride to finish up Galaxy's <laughs> Edge, Edge at bet. Hollywood Studios. So yep. they've had to delay that project. And just this morning, as we're broadcasting this live, I hosted a panel for the good folks over at my place. It was there an all star panel? We had HP uh, Patel, the outgoing uh, chairman here of AHOA. Yep. Chip Rogers, the former CEO of AHOA and now current president and CEO of the American Hotel and Lodging Association, and four um, franchisers, developers of properties. And a number of these guys also happen to own their own construction companies. Mm -hmm. And Bruce, what they were telling me is exactly what you were just saying right now. All areas of it, from operating the hotel to getting that hotel built, finding the people to do it yeah. in a timely and efficient manner is becoming ever more challenging, and it's raising those prices as much as uh, 15%, they were saying this morning. I yeah. believe that this all happens and this all can be mitigated somewhat with more people focusing on the education institutions that are out there yeah. and going and educating people that the hotel industry has the best selection of jobs available really in any industry you right. can do so many yeah. different things in the hotel business so many different types of jobs and just going into it headlong and trying to learn all of those tasks i mean you could be a you could be out of the operating the individual hotel and owning your own company by the time you're 30 with, yeah. with you know i mean it's that's the goal that's the so, magic of this industry and that's why i think you know the, this hospitality gets into all of our dna Yep. It's, you know, it's, it's infectious. It's a great industry. I yep. mean, you know, I went from more general purpose commercial real estate to hospitality over 25 years ago. And I got to tell you, if I hadn't made that change to hospitality, I'd probably be selling T-shirts out of a kiosk at the Ala Moana Shopping Center in Hawaii going, dude, I'm going surfing now. Right. You know, uh, that's such a bad exciting. idea. I think maybe you chose poorly, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> you doing that. <laughs> uh, you never know. But, you know, it's it's. Yeah, this is an industry that's that's been just the best to me, and and you, and you guys both know this being heavily involved with the California Lodging Investment Conference. You know, part of the mission of that conference is to give back. So we give back to various scholarship programs within you know the confines of California and develop new talent. Um, you know, and it is you know you can be a doorman you know today in a decade or two later you're. CEO of a you know an up and coming hotel company and doing something that's really hip chic and cool, and and you know dominating in the boutique lifestyle right. sector or you know branded upscale select service you know assets. It's, so. one of, it's one of the great industries that you learn by doing and you learn by experiencing, yeah. and you can learn on site. Absolutely, right. excellent. So let's uh you know let's let me well, make uh, one more yeah? point if you don't mind. Yeah, no, on, no, on the construction costs here, I think actually we're probably up over twenty percent in California. Yep. And oh, these guys were like from Pacific Northwest or the Midwest that were saying. Yeah. It. So it doesn't surprise me. It's more down here. Yeah. And you know, just to make it safe, I'm going to say between twenty and twenty five. Um, if you start looking at all the due diligence that has to come in, you know, and and dealing with the Coastal Commission, dealing with environmental issues you know the permitting process with the individual cities and everything else and we shut down a hotel in anaheim three years ago 154 keys completely shut it down and touched everything in it and made it turnkey and rebranded it in eight months okay wow. that wasn't the norm no but i got to tell you because the city of anaheim is so on top of it with their Health inspections, their, 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 you know, their inspections for the construction and everything that you touch. We passed all the inspections with health, and and with uh, the city 
and the brand all on the first go around. Nice. So, but you know, there was a premium to be paid there, and it's it's continuing to get higher and higher. And as you're bringing in more consultants and advocates for the for the project, and you bring you bring in somebody to speed through the permitting process. Okay, there's another charge there, you know, and that fee's going up because those people are like gold right now. There's not a lot of them out here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all right. So that's great point. Let's wrap. Let's wrap this uh, this show up for today. It's been great speaking to you guys, but uh, you know what time it is? Shameless plug time. Uh, Bruce Ford, let it rip. Uh, Launching Econometrics is now on Facebook. Also, nice. (laughs) Also, nice. LinkedIn and Twitter. uh, Launching Economet. And uh, what's great is our 1Q stuff will hit the street here probably on the end of this week. And I'll have a preview of it on Thursday during the AHOA conference. Ooh, that's awesome. Craig? I can't wait to hear your information. It's always great. Well, um, you know, the California Lodging Investment Conference returns on March 5th, 2020. And Bruce and Glenn will be joining us for that. Um, Launched a new company recently, 3 by 10 Partners. We've got uh, the Checkout California 3x10 interview show. It's a streaming show on YouTube and the other social media channels. And it's got a sister show, uh, Partner Channel OC, connecting the dots between Orange County businesses. So staying real busy with that. Yeah, and be sure to catch uh, Bruce Ford's parents on 3x10, available right now on your YouTube channel. Yes, it is. And right. you will be up there shortly. Oh, yeah, so. we do one We do one today, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Uh, all right, so um, for those of you that are listening to the audio version of this podcast, stick around because we got another great interview coming up with uh, Phil Hugh and Andy Alexander. And for the rest of you, thanks for watching this live broadcast. We're going to be back all day Thursday, all day Friday with a lot of great content. So Keep it tuned. See you guys soon. Thanks for listening. Have a question for your host, Glenn? Tweet him now at Traveling Glenn. No vacancy. The hospitality industry's number one podcast will be right back. Hey, everybody. Glenn here. So listen, Red Roof's been using the slogan, Genuine Relationships, Real Results. And they've been doing it for a while now. And I've got to tell you, the folks that I've met at Red Roof, that's really not a slogan as much as it is about their character and the way they do business. It's because partnering with Red Roof, well, it gets you significant brand awareness, seasoned management team, and an owner-operator perspective because they manage some 120 properties themselves. And that's in addition to the award-winning marketing department, a richest in class loyalty program with more than 3 million members and is least expensive for franchisees to boot. Hey, that's not just what uh, with Red Roof, which has been voted best budget hotel brand by USA Today readers three of the past five years, but it's also Red Roof Plus, the brand extension that created the upscale economy segment and will be Canada's first introduction to Red Roof with a new property opening soon in Calgary. Be on the lookout for that. And for franchisees looking to get into the explosively fast-growing extended stay market, well, Hometown Studios by Red Roof has more than 50 renovated properties in more than 35 markets. And of course, you've got the Red Collection, a group of mid-scale, unique hotels that are hyper-local and inspired by each city's vibe and culture with brand standards based on consumer wants rather than design mandates. Now, properties are open in Manhattan, Chicago, and Springfield, Illinois, with more coming. So today, it looks like many of the industry's best opportunities can be all found under the same roof, each one offering, you guessed it, genuine relationships, real results. To learn more, visit redrooffranchising.com or call 888-473-8861. That's 888-473-8861. Tell them Glenn sent you. Back to the show. It's No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman. All right, all right. We are back broadcasting live from AHOACON 2019 at the uh, No Vacancy Studio, brought to you by Red Roof. I want to thank them for being such a great partner here. And I just happen to have two guys from Red Roof, Mr. Andy Alexander, the president of Red Roof, Mr. Phil Yu, chief development officer of uh, Red Roof. And uh, guys, I think we all seem to have something in common right now, but I can't figure out what it is. For those of you that are not watching us on video right now, we all we, uh, we seem to have official uh, Red Roof glasses. What's that all about? This Andy? Is, we're here in San Diego in the fun and sun, <laughs> and we're going to 
we're going to have a great fun time here in the no vacancy, although it looks more like it's the Red Roof podcast to me. Yeah, you know, it really does. And everybody comes by. And they're like, oh, Red Roof is doing a podcast. I'm like, I really I really should mention something to you that we have some sort of co-branding on here so people know what's going on. But at least you're the winner in this. And everybody thinks uh, you guys are doing uh, great out here. I just love that you have all the CEOs and top executives yep. here staring at the Red Roof <laughs> sign for a half an hour. That's, that's, that's a great thing. A uh, great thing for us as a brand. Well, it certainly gives them a, a lot to think about. So, uh, you know, Phil, let me throw the next question uh, your way. We're here at AHOACON 2019. What a group of people that are here. Biggest convention so far. Um, what's going on on the trade show floor in regards to uh, Red Roof? Because you've got a big announcement that you did today. Well, I tell you, I've never felt more comfortable. This is a really great room. I'm, uh, yeah. well, I'm liking the decoration. I have to talk to my wife about some changes. At home, <laughs> I think. So, you know, in the sunglasses, we had to put them on because the future's so bright for uh, red roof that we had to, uh, had to, uh, had to wear shades. So we're excited about uh, what's happening. As you know, this is our Super Bowl. It's yeah. the biggest event. We, uh, 90% of our franchisees are, are, are Asian American and affiliated with AHOA. So this is a, this is just our, our big event of the year. It's it's like a family reunion. The booth is, is jumping and just right. a lot of great conversations happening. Yeah, I'm sorry to remove the uh, the, the glasses for just one moment. I know if oh, you're, yeah, uh, you know, you guys can keep yours on. Oh, if, we're if okay like. for now. All right, we're okay for, for now because I do want to see, uh, you guys had big breaking news today. You unveiled a brand new prototype for the hometown studios. I got the press release right in front of me. I just want to make sure I got all the facts right. But I think the easier thing to do is just throw it to you, Andy. Why don't you tell us all about the brand new prototype? Well, as you know, Glenn, last year we launched Hometown Studios by Red Roof. Yep. By the end of the year, we mm -hmm. had over 50 up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an exciting new opportunity for the entire AHOA and franchise community. And this, uh, this just yesterday we launched, or just today, we put out the press release that we have a brand new prototype we're working on as we're working towards both new build and conversion hometown studios uh, uh, really a high demand and phil phil's team's out there and we've we've seen just the demand for the product go through the roof yeah let me first congratulate you phil yeah. 50 in one year well it was it was one full swoop so it was more of okay. a, it was more of a uh, it was more of a great joint venture put together okay. uh you know with the company but What's exciting about it is that it's created a lot of buzz in the space, Red Roof getting into another extension. As you know, we do a ton of research before we launch anything. Right. So having this product come on, we now we are able to touch it, feel it, design it, uh, and renovate all these hotels. And as we're out now with our sales team, they're saying, as many people that want to convert, there's twice as many that say, hey, let's build a new one. So we, we put the prototype out there. It's sort of the first evolution. We're now looking to partner with some developers to go build these and fine tune and make sure that we value engineer this to, right. to be very efficient. The key to this is really efficient use of space and make sure that we can bring it in at a very, very cost efficient price. So what can people expect when they go ahead and they invest in this uh, brand new prototype, assuming they build it as you debuted it today? Well, I think that's important. I think what Phil said though, the first, uh, the first few who jump on board, they're gonna really right. be given an opportunity to help us fine tune it in the way, in their vision as well. I mean, we have, we have most of the basics down, but everybody wants to do something that has their fingerprints on them, and this is going to be a great opportunity for those, those groups. But it's going to come in at an economical price, and I think that's one of the most important things. You know, while the numbers aren't finalized, we're looking at a fifty-five thousand dollar ish price. Wow, uh, excluding land, and you know, we need to refine that with the final architectural plans for an individual and what they want to do to their property but that's really gonna put them on a platform for you know a lot of success and right. operation of the property all right so let me make sure I, I i got this straight so what you're really looking for is not just someone to buy the prototype as is but almost help you create a living laboratory right mm -hmm. from beforehand bringing in the uh, the ownership knowledge base to say oh we might be able to tweak this and this before we even put shovels in the ground and then i guess through the construction and through the opening process you learn a lot more as you go is that a correct as assumption yeah for, well first thing we did we obviously we listened to the customers right. we listened to the franchisee and then we've hired two individuals who have extensive extended stay experience on the operation side robert hubbard comes to us from value place so he has Not a lot cool. of that that basic understanding of the operations and what it needs to have right. additional storage 
uh, and those those types of things that a long-term stay customer uh, right. would would uh, will be looking for in a product. And, uh, and then let me just add one thing in case people don't sure. know what Value Place is. It's a uh, an, you know, Spring, as we know. Yeah, yeah. right. Is now currently mm -hmm. Woodspring created by the one and only Jack DeBoer, who really birthed the whole economy. Uh, not economy. Sorry, extended yes. stay segment out there. So great that you have someone like that on board to inform you of you know how this uh, this side of the business is uh, evolving over time, right? And then on the franchise operations side, Phil's yeah. added some team members as well. Yes, yeah, so we brought Bill Hall in, yep. who's an industry great veteran. Dude. You were with him last week, and you know he's spent a lot of time with Hawthorne and and several other brands. So he's he's got that experience to really make sure that we're designing it to be franchisee friendly. And we're also talking to all the industry experts. We're talking to construction companies and feasibility companies, and they're giving us the numbers that we need to total on. We we came in at you know we're targeting 55 as the goal, uh, because that's what you know that's what the competition sort of right. building for. So if we can if we can come into that number, I think we'll be very aggressive. Plus, with the the brand awareness of Red Roof and the growth we've had the last five years, it just everything seems to be just rolling in the right direction. So how do you put together a property that comes in on that number when the only thing certain about construction costs is they're continuing to to rise so i would think uh, for me developing a brand that would give me a lot of angst but thinking about what i'm going to have for breakfast gives me a lot of angst so maybe uh, you know i'm just overreacting no i think you know costs are going to continue to go up they've mm -hmm. they've gone up quite a bit over the last five or six years we don't build a lot of new red roofs there's such a great opportunity right. in the conversion marketplace why would you go spend those dollars yeah. when you can convert a hotel for a, for a lot less mm -hmm. and be open and operating in maybe three maybe six months as a fully renovated red roof this space is underbuilt. The yeah. extended stay space, especially in the, the upper economy, lower mid market, there's not enough supply. This is where the demand is, and new construction is the way to go. So we're just we're jumping in the game. Yeah, it is absolutely a hot, hot, hot segment. And uh, I got the press release that you all put out today in regards to this. And you've got my favorite little factoid in there from our friends over at Logic Econometrics that over a quarter of the new construction pipeline is in extended stay. Man, what a hot market is. No wonder you guys want to really try to leverage it as much as possible. Well, and the majority of the stuff, the majority of the new construction in the right. economy stay, space is extended stay. Right. So it just fits it fits our model perfectly. Our franchisees want it and you know because they trust us and we've built great relationships with them, it's it's uh, the conversations are plentiful. Yeah, and if you think about it today, the the problem that is facing most hotel companies and certainly franchisees and operators is labor. Not in term, not only in terms of the cost, and that certainly is just going up at a much faster pace than ADR and Revpar is rising, but also just finding the labor, and the extended stay model really reduces the need for, you know, having this, it's particularly on housekeeping, and it alleviates some of that that pressure that's coming to the hotel industry with respect to, to right. wages as well as finding the right the right, right staff. And the, the reason why Andy is talking about the housekeeping thing is because people don't expect daily housekeeping service when you're in an extended stay property. So depending on what your policy is, every four days, five days, one week, it really cuts down to the amount of people you need to be having cleaning rooms every day. Yeah, exactly. And your, your bottom line margins on your extended stay product far exceed even the economy level product, much less full service. Do you have a good sense of how many uh, full-time employees are going to be required? You, you know, at a regular Red Roof Inn, you might have 15 to 17 employees. You're probably half that number. Wow. Half that? Half that number. That's pretty uh, That's pretty good. That must make your job a lot easier, Phil. Well, it does, but it's still making sure we pick the right marketplace. Of course. Find the right location for these. We don't want to put them just to build them. We want to make sure that they, the demand generators are there to support it. So. Well, that's the difference between you and me. I would just want to build them and get those uh, great commissions and then move to Mexico. <laughs> 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 All right, so I want to talk about the overall extended state, uh, not extended state, sorry, yeah, the economy segment, upper mm -hmm. economy segment where you, you folks are in. What's interesting to me is five years ago, six years ago, I think we were talking about how there's nothing happening in the, extend, in the, uh, the economy segment, but now... All of a sudden, it's super on fire out there. What a great place to be right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I would agree. I wouldn't say nothing was going on, but well, it was the, less. All the attention was, was put less talked on about. the mid scale hotels, sure. the blah, 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 blah. Right. And it was almost as if your side of the business was. Um, being ignored in either the media or in the industry conversation. Sure, there was development happening, but I've seen a huge uptick in that particular segment. Yeah, no, I think that's true. I think, you know, the supply in the mid-scale and upper mid-scale has 
really got a little bit out of control. So people are starting to focus elsewhere, and the economy segment is is definitely part of that. Our red pars keep going up, mm-hmm. uh, probably a tick more than the rest of the industry. As as our um, we're holding the line on expenses, mm-hmm. and it really means a more profitable product. Right. So where some of the other segments in the industry are being squeezed both by rising costs and the inability to push rates, you've found a mechanism in order to keep both of those things in your favor. I, b- I believe that's correct. Well, right. I, and I also think you know, there was activity in economy, but Red Roof was sitting there in 2013 with 86, 87% franchise right. satisfaction, mm-hmm. 60% brand Ooh. contribution. And 60%. Really, that's pretty impressive. And a really happy franchisee community. We were 80% company managed and owned five years ago. Right. Now we're 85% franchised. Wow. So the growth, I think we, Red Roof, the story behind this brand is it's really driven the interest in the economy space. We, nine years in a row now, we've been number one in TripAdvisor reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, That's terrific. Trust me, we we look at it, like we were at five, we're like, okay, can we do it another year? And it just continues to happen, but we focus on quality. We don't negotiate our pips. We, you know, to be we're reasonable and fair, but we're not letting properties come in without looking and feeling and being a red roof. And that's why our owners are so happy because one, they know the guy down the street's going to do it, and two, they're going to open up and be profitable. So it's it's just a different little story within the economy space. Yeah, we switched from having franchisees trying to avoid doing pips right. to franchisees enforcing the pips on themselves others. and others and others yep. um, they're very concerned I mean the first question as they come to our training class in Columbus is you know how do we make sure everybody's doing what I'm doing because they're all they are all in on the brand and they're all in on quality and performance and and we're really seeing that improvement well the franchisee satisfaction is key I, I met with what 50 people today already right and they're like well Phil you know what what makes you different one it's the relationships we have with our franchisees. We've got a high level of touch from our operations side on the franchise side. But I said, just go talk to any of our franchisees right now. They're all over. Talk to any of them, and they'll tell you why this is a special place. I've worked at other companies. I could, that probably wasn't my line right. uh, by any means. <laughs> Here, call any of our franchisees. Ask them why they're doing it. And, you know, they're dipped in red, and they love the brand, and we're, we're really excited about what the future holds. I mean, yeah, there are. Uh, they're our best sales people, oh, yeah. for sure. That's awesome. So how about giving me a little bit of an update on uh, Red Roof Plus? I don't want to skip over that. Well, Red Roof Plus continues to grow just as we thought. We're about 12 13% of the brand. We always said it would be between 10 and 15%. Uh, we're getting those markets with, with higher ADR potential, and we're choosing our operators carefully and having really great performance on the plus side. Plus is great. I mean, it, yeah. it, we're the only brand in the economy segment where you can move up, come in as a red roof, and move up to a plus. A lot of our competition likes you come in and maybe you move down. Right. Mm-hmm. With us, you come in and you can move up to a plus, renovate over time to meet all the standards, and then join the plus family. Now, there are some RevPAR components that we look yeah, at because we don't want to, you know, it needs to continue to be in higher RevPAR areas to support the extra services we offer and the few amenities. But it's still a basic red roof with 100% renovated, meeting all of our brand standards. So, like, we... we then when we launched it, we said 10%. Right. We're right at that number. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like that attitude, Phil, because um, what, you're, what you're really saying is the other brands out there, you hear the stories of we have a, we have a flag for every part of the life cycle with mm-hmm. the assumption that economy isn't as respectable maybe as some of the other segments out there, right? So it's kind of like the last gas. But you're saying, no, you know, it's the opposite way. You, you have a great property here and then you could plus it a little bit a perfect example you have a great property they renovated they came to us halfway through and they put carpet maybe on the top floor right we got them we convinced them and gave them the rationale why they should use the the ltv the vinyl flooring on the on the floors but they couldn't become a plus we didn't want them not to get the the benefit of that new carpet so they, they may keep it for 18 months to two years rip it out over time and now now they meet all the plus standards right so we'll let them upgrade 
Beautiful. So what else do we need to know about what you guys are up to these days? I, I think we're missing the big story, which is Red Collection. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about Red Collection yet. Wait. Hey, yeah. uh, of course, you've got one uh, in Chicago's uh, Miracle Mile. And uh, what's where else are you, you going now? you got one in New York City. New York now, right? City. I've heard of that, right? Uh, yeah. We've all heard of I, that. I, I think I've heard of that city. Yeah, we oh, are, yeah. I live there. <laughs> we are just off Times Square. so we, we're on That the, is freaking cool. We're on the Mag Mile, and we're at Times Square. And so for... For a product under the red roof umbrella, it's it's super exciting. And okay. the Lord and Morris is right off of Times Square, and of course the St. Clair uh, is right there at St. Clair in Michigan. Really well located properties, and the third open property, is Springfield, Illinois. Mm -hmm. So uh, the land of Lincoln and a mid-century uh, type design that that you know, if you're going to Springfield, Illinois, it's the place to be. You're basically attached to the capital and right. it's really it's a uh, it's a great location. Uh, I mean uh, three great, you know, properties mm -hmm. right out of the gate. What can we expect with the brand moving forward? Well, or we should have, I say the soft brand? Well, we have a, we have a new construction underway in Brooklyn. Fantastic. So, where where in Brooklyn? Um if you could remember. Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, All I, you New I lived, I lived exactly in Brooklyn for 20 years. I, you know, it's, it's like, right next to Joe's Pizza. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Somewhere in Brooklyn. As, as, I'm just hoping it's not on uh, 4th Avenue in the Park Slope area. There are way too many hotels over there it's not. already. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's actually being done as a Lord and Morris as well. So uh -huh. we'll have two in the area. We've That's got, awesome. And we have a really great pipeline and conversations going on, not only with Center City locations, but we're looking at resort destinations, mm -hmm. places that you wouldn't put a red roof or a red roof plus. Right. Again, we don't launch brands to compete with ourselves. We launch brands to take care of what the consumer is asking us for. And we knew that if you go into these downtown center city locations or resorts, you have to be able to drive rate. And when you have a product in the economy space, you could hit a rate ceiling at some point. Now this allows them to get all the benefits of the brand, but be able to drive rate and enjoy you know, all the services that Red Roof offers. Right. That's why I like the uh, soft brands because it, it's it, it's kind of an in-between. You don't have to go all in um, with a particular brand if you want to have a little bit more of an independent mindset as a hotel. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a little bit more control while at the same time, it opens all of you to have a more, uh, I'll use the word, flavorful portfolio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, and we're not looking to put them on you know I-95 to right. Florida. We want to yeah. make sure that they're in really cool areas you can have walking distance to art galleries and restaurants we're not trying to launch a product just well, you to, have other products for, for exactly yeah. exa we're not trying to launch another product just to build one next door to what exists right um, we have a lot of growth we're growing, you know, we've got a lot of room on the West Coast, and we've got a lot of international growth. And I, 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 between you and me, I think there was there was a lot of subtext to that last, <laughs> that last statement. <laughs> so, anything, anything else that you guys want to wrap up with? I feel like we've told a pretty cohesive story today about what you folks are up to. You know, first of all, I'd just like to say to you, Glenn, thanks for being our partner again, and thank you having this Red Roof booth. It's a great uh, opportunity for us to showcase the brand in a clear glass uh, enclosure, which you don't get the opportunity to do very well. Uh, we look forward to continuing that partnership yeah, and exactly. selling a lot of franchises here Thanks. at AHOA. Well, thank you so much for uh, putting your faith behind the, uh, the No Vacancy podcast and, of course, uh, this booth here every year. Boom! I'm back in uh, uh, back in the red roof mood. For those of you listening, we put back on our red sunglasses. Man, I feel like I'm ready to go out and tackle the sun in San Diego now that I've got the right gear on my face. All right, let's do it. All, All right, right, so I, I got to make sure before we wrap up, Phil, you deserve a great plug. I would give you one, Andy, but I think he's going to get the uh, the whole franchising thing covered. So let's All right, start, let's let's start with it. him. Oh, my. Shameless blood. Go for it. You know what? If you're interested in a brand that cares about you, that has a great, that wants to build a relationship with you long term, and is not looking to just sell a franchise, we're the brand to come talk to. Excellent. Beautiful. Andy, you want to give a shameless plug, too? I'll just say, uh, come see us at the booth if you're listening live. All right. If you're listening live, come see them at the booth on the show floor. You won't miss giant red roof sign right over there. And come by the No Vacancy Red Roof Studio here. And come say hello to all of us. And if you're part of the AHOA community, come share your story with me on Friday between 1 and 3. We'd love to get you featured in here as well. So for Phil, Eddie, and myself, Glenn, thanks for listening or watching the No Vacancy <laughs> Podcast. We'll be back soon with another amazing interview. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening to No Vacancy, the hospitality industry's number one podcast with your host, Glenn Hausman, online at Rouse.media, on Twitter at Traveling Glenn, and on Facebook.com slash Glenn.Hausman. We'll catch you next time.